Yo, what's up everyone? Gids here for another Summoner's War Chronicles video and today we are going to talk about Galagos Ruins. I'm gonna be giving some general tips and tricks for everyone, not only just Kino mains, so that we can help out everyone and of course some specific Kino main tips and tricks as well. Alright, so I just finished mine yesterday live. So if you want to check out the whole gameplay or the whole playthrough for my Galagos Ruins run, you can check out my live stab on my YouTube. So you can check that out. It was yesterday, so that was the live yesterday or just look for Galagos Ruins run. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. I think the first tip that I want to share to everyone especially those who are struggling, is that the Galagos Ruins has different elite boss monsters for each of the stages over here. So you can he see here, uh, stage 3 has elite monsters, stage 9 and stage 10 has elite monsters as well. So um, you want to plan out your routes. That's your tip number one over here. Plan out your routes because some of these ones you definitely want to avoid. So how to plan out your route, of course, you can see here there's a tournament bracket, right? that where, when you defeat one of the stages, you get to move on to the next one that's connected to it. So how you plan out your routes is you want to check out the strategy info over here on the right side. So generally you want to avoid this guy <laughs> because this one destroys the HP of your monsters and the liches also deal so much damage. So, and there's also an endure buff over here. Alright, so if you don't have a good strip monster or if you're not playing Orbia with the wind weapon, it's going to be a little bit hard to actually beat this one. But I will have a tip later on on how to deal with destroyed HP, so stay tuned. Okay, so you can see here stage 3 2. I actually went to stage 3 2 because this one's one of the much easier areas, much easier floor bosses. But you want to be careful of this stage because they do this one, okay? Attack down and death down, right? That's attack down and death down. Usually it gets to attack down and death down level 10, right? So also, I think this also drops damage over time, like electric shock level 10. So you need to bring a cleanser to this stage right here. Next up, we have this one. Oh, Veroma stage is the bane of everyone's existence. This was actually really hard. So it puts down unrecoverable and I think the others also yeah recovers HP. So this one makes this one is a little bit harder for most people. Um if you want if you want to really go through this one, through this stage, you want to bring in a monster that puts unrecoverable on monsters like Colleen or Celia, the light harp magician. Okay. So yeah, you can do that one. Um, if you're running the bomb build, if you haven't seen the bomb build yet for Cleave, then definitely you have to avoid this one because Veromos will always clear your bomb and you might have a hard time <laughs> trying to fight this. So always dodge the Veromos stage. And lastly, we have oh another, another one of these. This one, again, another skip for me. This one, this Water Lich actually hits really, really hard. So this one's a little bit hard, especially when they all clump. Up. So the easiest stage that I was able to see from stage 3 is this one. So here you, you really just need to bring in immunity and if you have strip, bring on the strip for this and this, right? So yeah, pretty much that's how I planned out my stage or my fourth floor. So I went through this one and then of course when it came to this, of course we're almost we're almost near the boss stage already so I did not really want to fight another elite stage over here during these crossroads right here. I mean elite stages will definitely give you more resources or more cards, better cards, but you know at this point I think I'm already I'm really I'm already prepared to fight the boss and I just want to speed up the run so I just skip the elite stage. Although the trap rooms here are actually pretty easy once you have the card that makes you immune to push and slow. So yeah, that would have been much easier. Actually, I, I could have just went down here, right? Down here, take the trap room and then take this one. It would have been easier, but I wanted to take, I don't know. I wanted to take the Galagos coins rewards here on the combat stages because you don't really get Galagos coins from trap stages, right? So after that one, also I planned out this route again. So it's the Undines and Sylphs again because, oh, I think that's probably why I went up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very much stage down here, okay? So that's how you want to plan out your routes on Galagos, okay? So a well thought out 
plan would definitely help your success rates much better instead of just going in blind and not checking out what the bosses are for the elite stages because usually it's the elite stages that really burns your monster energies especially if you lose and retry so yeah it burns a lot of energy for your monsters since i already talked about the dark raven how you absolutely want to dodge that floor here's how here's a trick on how you can actually avoid or how you can remove the destroyed hp on your monsters so let's just speed this up for a little bit. So this is one trick that you can use. Use invincibility. Chloe with her invincibility will prevent all damage that goes through your monster. And um, Dark Raven without doing any damage will mean he will not be able to destroy any HP. But in cases wherein you get your HP destroyed, then here's the trick that you can do. Okay, so basically you just want to unequip your monster. So click on your monster book. Unequip the monster, select a soul link monster first, and then unequip it, alright? Now that it's unequipped, equip it again, equip your bulldozer, and now he does not have any destroyed HP, and you can just heal him up, and you're good, right? So that's basically how you can counter the destroyed HP for the monsters. Now, how about for your summoner? Okay, so for your summoner, it's much simpler than for your monsters, because you actually just have to wait it out. Look here, my Kina has around... 1% destroyed HP and we're just gonna wait it out over here so just give it a couple of seconds dun, 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 dun. and there you go if you see here there's no more destroyed HP so you really just have to wait it out of combat right that's the easiest way to counter the destroyed HP from Jamadar the Dark Raven all right okay another tip is that you want to maximize the monsters that you have actually because look at this <laughs> i have so many monsters here that i haven't really used and has a lot of energies because if you just first try most of the stages or almost all of the stages you will have a lot of energy left over so don't be afraid of using monsters on, on floors one and two especially if it's hard and you want to make it go faster or you want to make your run faster right i just have a couple of monsters or well of course stage three and stage four i used a lot of my five star monsters that's why you see here feng yan are out of energy espino galleon right all those good quality monsters have been used a lot in floor three and floor four that's why you have them there but you can see here i have a lot of monsters that we're unused. Chloe here is full energy because she got restored. You also have Colleen, Moomin Rider, Bernard, this guy, right? So we have a lot of excess energy, especially if your monster pool is huge or if you just have a lot of th three star monsters, three four star monsters that are built. It's going to be much easier if you just bring them in for some of the stages just to make the runs so much easier and faster. So don't be worried about your energies as long as you keep saving your best monsters for floors three and four you should be okay because you have a lot of energy okay so for your next tip is you want to pull the monsters one at a time you don't really want to go in head first in some of the stages especially fourth floor because your monsters could just easily die once everyone gangs up on you so there are stages like this one where you can just start pulling off the monsters one by one killing them because you can definitely take your time you can see the timer here is we still have six minutes for the dungeon end so the time limit is actually a lot so maximize the time don't worry about the time right like you have a lot of time to clear the dungeon better better safe than sorry right because if you die if your monsters die like oh this one actually pulled more than i wanted but it's okay i think i can handle them right but yeah if you want a faster run it's going to be much riskier if you just pull in everyone all at once rather than just try to pull them one at a time so for another general tip these electric fans right here <laughs> these fans over here actually strip your monster so if you saw that once the wind blows, your monsters will be stripped, right? So you want to avoid fighting monsters when you don't want to get debuffs on your team. So those electric fans right there actually strips your team. So if you have the card that gives you immunity to push, that's good. But after that one, of course, they are still going to strip your monsters. So you want to be careful, right? You can see that strip over there once the wind blows. Yep, all my buffs got stripped. 
Okay, so that's it for the general guide, but uh, next up are the Kina specific guides that I want to share. So first for monster selection. Okay, monster selection for a Kina player, you definitely want to get monsters that deal damage based on defense, HP, because those monsters are going to be very valuable since in Galagos Ruins, you can get cards that increases your monsters, defense and HP. So some good choices are Feng Yan, the Wind Panda, the Chimeras, um, fire and water so Teor and Rakan you also have bulldozer that I really use a lot I also have Sir Acteon right here a uh, zinc copper or is this copper I forgot his name <laughs> the light um living armor right so those monsters are going to be very very valuable I suggest don't really put in a lot of assassin monsters because they just die so fast they die so fast like Etna here is super useful for the strip and death down especially against the endure monsters right or the endure elite bosses like the dark raven boss or dark raven stage right but i already have a spino for that but anyways so yeah defense based hp based damage monsters are really really good okay so for other monster choices you want to bring in cleansers a lot of cleansers because there are a lot of cards that give you healing give you buffs when you cleanse enemy debuffs so Juno is definitely a good choice. Shushu as well. Where is Shushu? Shushu right here. And we also have Konamiya and Mav as well. So if you have any other cleansers that you can bring in, bring them in. Immunity is also okay. Um, although my Wusa is not good. <laughs> he has no skill ups. That's why his immunity runs out so fast. But yeah, cleansers are super, super good. I'll show the cards later. And then lastly, you want to bring in a lot of damage dealers and strips. Strips are also very important, especially for the boss stages and the endure stages, right? You want Espino, Sekhmet, Ethna. Yeah, those are the ones that I can think of at the top of my head right now. But yeah, okay. Next up is at stages 3 and 4, you want to start taking off some of the magic orders that you have over here because stage one and two these ones are easy or pretty okay to put on your summoner right stages one and two it's okay to put increased damage taken decrease precision by your monsters you can also go decrease damage dealt or just go crit rate crit damage decrease crit damage i don't know all those are okay to take right on stage one and stage two because you want to be farming galagos coins Right, uh, this one also we can increase resistance, right? So these are usually my debuffs for my run. Wait, you can't actually see it. Okay, let's move here. So these are my usual debuffs for my Galagos Ruins. And once we start g moving into stage 3, I start taking out some of the debuffs here that are actually really good or really bad for my monsters. Probably something like this. I think I was running stage 3 until stage 4 with this. And I just realized it at, I think, at the end of uh, Floor 4 that I actually had these things on my monsters. That's why it's a little bit so much harder. But it net me a lot of Galagos coins. So yeah, if your goal is to really just clear Galagos ruins, it's better to just not take any debuffs. But anyways, increase all creatures accuracy and precision are actually bonus here because they will always land their debuffs anyway and they will always hit their basic attacks anyway so why not just take it right why not just take it another one that you can get here is resistance because i mean it's fine right sure they can resist but it doesn't matter 50 percent resistance you will hit your stuff anyway maybe i don't know <laughs> but yeah if you don't want that then you can check out others over here Right, you can check out the others as well. Um, definitely don't want increased attack, increased HP for the enemies, crit damage as well, because your monsters are just going to die. Attack speed probably you can put, but yeah, this is my final setup to make it so much easier for Kina mains out there, because definitely it's so much harder for Kinas out there. All right, next up is we want to check out the cards. Okay, these are the cards that you can get. Uh, for Kina, you want to prioritize damage, damage. The damage buffs, okay? Damage cards like this one, Summoner's Will. Attack level 2, crit damage level 2, empowered strike, right? Damage dealt to the bosses, time to hunt. So this one removes one harmful effects on itself and applies attack speed up and crit rate up to monsters. Okay, that, that one is really, really good. I think the one of the best 
best hero cards over here is scapegoat so target summoner increases the damage dealt to the target by 25 percent this one's also very very good for orbia players i think this is this is one of the best best orbia player card this is the bomb that we've been talking about so when you are using a skill you get to put a bomb to three random enemies nearby and in addition the bomb will instantly explode if it is reapplied okay so this one's a really really good card especially for kina and if you go with the light weapon because light weapon has three charges on the skill tree so yeah there's a random chance when you're using a skill right so just keep spamming your skills and if you have Galleon, um, Konamiya, or Teon that has cooldown reduction, it makes it so much easier as well. So you get you get to spam your skills. Um, if you're also on your wind weapon at level 70 Kina, you get to put Im infinite immunity, heals, and whatever while you're spamming your skills and all the monsters around you is just going to die, right? So you can see here, right? A lot of DPS, right? This one, attack by 100%. So a lot, a lot of damage based cards one of the most important cards in the game for the trap stages or for floors that has the traps is this thing so you become immune to push pull and movement speed down so it makes the trap stages so much easier and there are also a lot of stages that have traps in them so definitely get this one whenever you can see it okay so that's pretty much it for the tips and tricks that i have if you still have any more questions let me know in the comments below i will try to answer them as much as i can and yeah if you try if you really just try to apply the tips especially planning out your routes taking the right cards and maximizing the monster energies you should be good on this one i think most of this is just bringing in the right monsters for each of the stages and planning the correct routes definitely because once you pick the wrong route and you you get stuck on a single route your monster's energy will get depleted and you will not have quality monsters to even be able to defeat the bosses or the last stage bosses right over here right so super important to really plan it out get the right monsters and of course take it slow i think taking it slow is the best tip that i can re really impart to you guys and yeah that's it for me thank you very much for watching and i hope you guys get to clear your galagos to wins as well and of course get your ld5s from the summon right there's a legendary light dark scroll because this is the third iteration of the galagos ruins already okay so i wish you all luck thank you very much for watching see you again next time Bye bye